So make sure that I don't do what I did yesterday in organic chemistry towards the end where I hit the button, turned it off, and so I do everything all out. And then when I went into the prayer, I thought I hit it, and so then I recorded the prayer. Nice. So that was faith integration. <laughs> so, okay. But, nope, we're going to pick up where we last left off, so to speak. But just to quickly review, we were going over enzyme kinetics. And in particular... You can have, you can, you, they use the term order, like the order of a reaction. And, for example, if something is first order, the exponent would be, whoa, the exponent would be um, to the first power. So overall, in this example here, it's the entire reaction is said to be second order, but it's first order with respect to A, first order with respect to, respect to B. And what that means is if you double the concentration of A, so if A went from like 5 to 10, you're going to double the rate. If you double the concentration of B, you're going to double the rate. If you half it, you're going to have, have it. Okay. Whereas if it was second order with respect to A, if you double the concentration of A, it would increase the rate four times because right? it would be 2 squared. And so that's why they mean with the overall. The overall reaction order is just the sum of the exponents. And then with respect to each individual substrate, um, they'll say like first order, second order, so on and so forth. And this, the reaction that they showed down below is one that we will actually talk about next semester because this is glycogen, uh, this is glycogen synthase. I'm sorry, this is not glycogen synthase. This is the glycogen phosphorylase, and so, um, which is why it is used in order to break down, remove a glycogen. And so the rate here is going to be first order with respect to glycogen, first order with respect to phosphate, <clears throat> but second order overall. Okay? It is possible to have a zero order reaction. That means that the rate does not change. You can keep adding more and more substrate. It doesn't matter. It's not going to get any faster. The only way to make it faster was if you added more enzyme or catalyst. So one way to think about that is that the enzyme has a limited, a finite number of binding sites. So once all of the enzymes and all of the, have all of their binding sites bound or occupied, you, you can keep throwing things at it, but it, it doesn't matter because it no longer can bind. So it's as fast as it can go. Okay. And so that's why if you just look at that part of the graph, it would look something like, like this, that as the function of substrate, and this is rate, if it's zero order, it's a straight line. <clears throat> Whereas if it's a first order, V versus the concentration of substrate, then it's linear. Okay. Uh, so with like a zero order reaction, is that, does that like happen in vivo? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. We're going to talk about it in just a moment. Okay, and so... Because you can have a reaction that's first order or, or even second order under certain conditions and becomes zero order later on. Okay. And so once again, just because for clarity's sake, well, I, I mean, they're, they're just going to have like a knockdown. It's like WWE next door. <laughs> first order. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know what's going on. Oh, whoops! I is incorrect. So it is zero order. Now I'm just zero. Zero order. Okay. Um, actually, I've already done, done this. The fact that what substrate is, what, where the active site occurs, the enzyme substrate complex, which what's another fancy term for the enzyme substrate complex? Michaelis, Michaelis complex, named after Michaelis of the Michaelis Minton equation. And so I'm just going to go ahead and skip this slide. 
Okay, so now we're going to look at some specific example, one specific example in particular. This is aspartate, the, the old term for it, or I guess the common term is called aspartate transcarbamoylase. And they abbreviate that as ATCase. However, the, the official classification for it would be aspartate carbamoyl transferase, because what that tells you, and what you're going to hopefully figure out, is it's a transferase enzyme, which means it's going to be transferring a functional group to something else, and it's transferring the functional group all the way, the carbamoyl portion of the functional group to aspartate. Move this over. Okay. And so aspartate carbamoyl transferase, or ATCase, is important because this is the first step for making pyrimidines. And carbamoyl phosphate is also important in the urea cycle. So, and we're going to find out that aspartate, not only is it an amino acid that's used for, um, to make proteins, however, it's a very, very important metabolic intermediate in multiple pathways. You're going to see how it's linked to multiple pathways next semester, <clears throat> just in general. Okay, so what happens here is we have carbamoyl. This is a carbamoyl group. It's a functional group that, that I didn't have you guys memorize, but it's just... It's a na another name for an amido, an amido group. So like acetyl is the simplest of the, of the, of the, um, the ketone groups. Well, this would be the simplest of the amide groups. And so because it's just a carbamoyl and then the phosphate. And then the carbamoyl group itself gets added on to the aspartate. Okay, so if we look at its reaction scheme, this is what it looks like. And so, once again, you should get used to seeing these. Um, the y-axis is going to be reaction velocity, or V, or sometimes they put a nu there instead of a V for velocity. And then this is the concentration of, of one of the substrates, because technically this has two substrates, so it's doing it as a function of aspartate. And you can see that there's this little bit of a lag, and then it increases, and then it's, it just decreases. No matter how much more aspartate you add, it peters out, okay? So first off, since this is a sig sigmoidal shape, what does that indicate? Cooperativity or allostery, that's correct, okay? And we're gonna find out, if you think back to when we first talked about cooperativity, this one's even more, more complicated, like it gets turned on in the presence of one of the nucleotides and it's turned off in the presence of the other. Um, but so it's finely, finely tuned, which makes sense considering the fact that it's important for DNA synthesis and RNA synthesis. So you want that tightly regulated. Okay. And at some point in time, as I mentioned before, it's going to peter out because all of the binding sites and all of the enzyme species out there are, are bound. And so now, what order reaction is it, Michael Hershey? <laughs> zero. And so a high concentration of uh, substrate, it becomes zero order with respect to aspartate. Obviously, if you don't have any of the carbamoyl phosphate around, then it's not going to go very fast. But with respect to aspartate, it's going to be zero order. Who so would say it's first order when it's low concentration? No, not necessarily. So here, at some point in time through here, it could be first order, but it could be second order at other uh, under other conditions. That's why it can actually change as a function of the substrate concentrations under different conditions. Okay. And then, once again, this is just the answer to the fact that there's cooperative, some of the hemoglobin, so there's allosteric enzyme. Okay, so this is just a generic, this is not a specific enzyme. And so, once again, if one thing that I want to point out here that I didn't point out before, when we were talking about the reaction rate, you have to have a barometer every reaction, we'll start off, here, let me just draw, you know, if we just looked at the formation of product as a function of time, which that is what the velocity is, you know, at time zero, you have no product, 
and then it's going to increase, la, 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 as time goes on, and then at some point in time, you're going to run out, because you're going to run out of substrate. And so, if you think back to calculus, what this means is that at every point along here, you could have a different tangent. Whoops, that's supposed to be a tangent. Okay, and so those tangents have different slopes, and the slope, you know, is the y, the change in the y over the change in the x, you know, so it would be delta p over delta t, which is the same thing as velocity, okay? So that's where we get the whole idea of velocity is just how much product you're making as a function of time, and it comes from the slope of the tangents. But since it's constantly changing, we have to have like a, a barometer, something that we always use for all enzymes in order to compare like two enzymes or two substrates or something like that. And so what they like to do, or what typically they do, is called the initial reaction rate or initial velocity. And so they only measure this portion, actually let me circle in a different color, this portion of the curve. You only look for the initial velocity. So as close to time zero as possible, because that's as fast as it usually will we'll get. Okay. And so that's why here, now, they're talking about, they're measuring, a lot of times we call it V-naught, but, or V-I, for the initial velocity as a function of substrate concentration. And so you, uh, you should start off with zero, 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 because if you have no substrate, you can't have a reaction. But you can see it increases with respect to time, I mean, with respect to the substrate concentration, and once again, it peters off. And we've already said that when it peters off here, it becomes what order of reaction with respect to substrate? Zero. Zero. Now, the way that this one's drawn is it, it really, they're showing it as being first order, but I just wanted to let you know that there are times that it's second order with respect to substrates. And so that's why it's not always going to be first order, but many times it will. So we it off. There we go. And so the rate at high concentrations of substrate, it no longer matters. And the reason why is because every binding site on the enzyme is full. And so the only way to make it go faster is if you add more enzyme. <clears throat> okay, whereas down lower, not every binding site on every single enzyme is full. And so that's why you, if you keep adding substrate, it will go faster and faster. So this actually brings us to the next um, item of business, and that's called Michaelis Minton kinetics or steady state kinetics. And before I go into that, I want to try to explain the rationale behind it. And so let me get a blank. And Good eye, good eye, Caitlin. <laughs> so, no. So we've already discussed the concentration of free enzyme and how it decreases initially, but you get it back. Now we're going to discuss the concentration of substrate. And so what happens to the free substrate as time goes by? Is it going to go up or go down? Go down. Do we ever get it back? No, not unless the reaction goes backwards. And so it's going to look something like this. Maybe it's maybe it doesn't matter how steep. Maybe you make drew yours really steep. Okay. And now in this color, I'm going to draw the concentration of the Michaelis complex. What will the at time zero, what will the concentration be of the Michaelis complex? Zero, because the reaction hasn't happened yet. So that one's an easy one. We can just start it down here. And what's going to happen to it with time? It's going to go up. So there's going to be a little bit of lag. And then it's going to go up. And then it's going to be steady, because it's at equilibrium with EP. And then at some point in time, it's going to go back down because you're going to start to run out of things. It may not go exactly to zero. You know, in the perfect world, it would, but it may not. And then I'm going to have to switch colors for your EP. Ooh, on this thing, it actually dropped much better than I do when I try to draw this on the board. 
for those who've had special topics class, we've already discussed something similar to this, if not this exact same thing. So what's going to be the initial concentration of EP at time zero? It's also zero. Is it going to, and it will have a lag, it's got to go up, but will its lag be shorter or longer than ES? Longer, because you've got to make the ES first, so la, 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 and then it goes up. It may be higher than the ES concentration, maybe lower. I'm just going to draw mine higher, so that way we can see it better. And its plateau is going to stay a little bit longer because of the fact that, you know, you use up all the ES first, and then it's also going to go down to approach zero. And then last but not least, we have product. Um, which product, for those who hopefully are not colorblind, it's a different color. And what's its concentration going to be in the beginning? Zero. Zero, and it's going to be the longest one to make. So it's going to go... And then eventually, it's going to end up somewhere. You know, maybe it's higher, maybe it's lower. I'm just drawing my higher so that way you can see it. OK. We only have a couple of minutes left, but I just wanted to get everybody caught up for this. Let me go take a swig of my coffee. I feel like I'm all in Sesame Street. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Near far. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Grover, you know, back in the day, and so we still have, I've got two minutes. Okay, so if we look at the, pardon? Oh, Dr. Harris was cookie monster. Yes, yes. So if we look at, there's a, a section where here, where the concentration of ES and the concentration of EP, both are not changing. Okay? So they call that the area where the concentration of the enzyme-bound intermediates aren't changing. That's called steady state. And that's going to make the math for the next class much, much easier. That's the steady state. Those are steady state kinetics. And the reason why is because what's the derivative of a straight line, a straight horizontal line? Zero. Okay? And so that's going to make the math much, much simpler. And the reason why is because the change in the y is zero. Zero divided by anything is going to be zero. And so before, that's called pre-steady state. So this is called pre-steady state. And this doesn't have a name because it's completely unimportant and irrelevant. And so... Next class, I'm going to pick up right here because we we'll talk a little bit about what you can get from pre-steady state versus steady state. The steady state is, the, is where, where the change in the enzyme-bound intermediate, so ES and EP in this example, are both zero. Like they're straight lines, flat lines. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll end class with prayer.